back. Take it with the programming. I'm Chase Ingram. I'm Captain America. And along with me is Bill Grundler. Wolverine. And we're back. Dude, two days in a row. Look at that. Back to back. Back What's to up, back everyone? To back. Happy Thursday. A little throwback Thursday. Yeah, it's been a while. On, uh, dot com on Thursday. That's today. right. That's right. That's right. Speaking of throwing things back, Bill, really quick. Bub's Naturals, presenter of the show. If you guys haven't tried Bub's Naturals and you don't know what it is, please go to bubsnaturals.com. It is the one-stop shop for your morning routine, coffee, MCT oil powder, collagen protein, apple cider vinegar gummies, electrolytes. Have you been using that? Dude, I have. It's, it's, it's weird because I feel like it's the kind that's good because it's not the kind that's super sweet. Um, a- yeah, no, it, there's, there's a salt kick to it for sure. I mean, you're getting, you're getting your salt you're getting in that. You're getting the right stuff. I'll say yeah, that. totally. Well, I, I didn't know what it would taste like because they have flavors of it. Mm-hmm. So they have yeah. lemon lime, they have the orange, and then they have the coconut. And mm-hmm. I, I, they're good. I really like the lemon lime. I really like the lemon lime. This thing just came down the pipeline. They have coffee. Yeah. Coffee, creamer, hydration, apple cider vinegar, gummies, everything on the website. If you use the code GWTP20, you'll get 20% off everything on the website. And here's the great thing. All you need is everything on the website. It's all oh, there. I want to get my stuff from here. It's all there. So the more you get, the more you save, and the more you give, because 10% of all proceeds are donated from Bubs to a military foundation of their choosing. So you're doing, you're doing yourself a whole lot of good and you're doing other people a whole lot of good. But I just saw this. This is brand new, and it's an instant coffee with the Halo Creamer in it. Do you, we talked about this yesterday. How Did we talk about it on the show? Uh, I think we were just talking about it yesterday. Okay. In general? Um, yeah. The, Starbucks has their little instant coffee, little quick brew things if you need Starbucks. something, like if you're in the hotel, whatever. I know. I'm just saying. Using it as an example, had to do, had to use one of those um, in a when, pinch. In a pinch, I had to use one of those when when I was with Logan um, at the uh, Northern California Classic, real quick. And I was, we were in our Airbnb, and I needed creamer, dude, and they didn't have it. And I'm like, God, it would be really cool if they had something like that together. Mm-hmm. And it was like I just manifested that out into the ether because instantly you go, hey, did you see this? Yep. Like, holy shit, that would have been amazing. Dude. Good coffee, amazing creamer in one. Well, here's the great thing is that, you know, my mornings, I mean, your mornings start earlier than mine do these days, but in my uh, affiliate owner days, they were early mornings and I'm not really ready to eat like a full meal or anything like that to get things started. But you put this all together, you take Bob's coffee, you grind it up, you pour it out. You just get to sit there and just enjoy the, there's just something about coffee making in general that I I enjoy. I love uh, it. The whole process, then the the sound of the beans grinding. Do you do the whole bean grinding? I do, I do the beans. I do the pour over. I do, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. But then you get that, and then you add this creamer to it, which is great for mental clarity, gut health. You get some good essential fats in there. It's non-dairy. It and tastes then you good. Add collagen protein, which puts 20 plus grams of protein into your coffee. So instead of like waking up and drinking just a, a protein shake? You just drink coffee? It's the best. It's the best. It's the best. It's the best. Anyways, just want to throw a shout out to, uh, yeah, hey, look, if you want to get strong coffee, that's fine. But put the collagen protein and Bub's Naturals MCT oil powder in it. In it. Okay. Um, other things. We just posted a question on our social media page this morning, tailoring off our conversation yesterday. And boy, oh boy, are the, co- <laughs> <laughs> are the comments out there. And the question was, should there be a standardized movement, skill level, and weight system for online CrossFit competitions for open, intermediate, RX, and elite divisions? Why or not? Why not? And the question stems for from... I mean, Bill and I have had these gumptions about certain programming in the spaces. Who are you programming for and why isn't it more standardized or finite? Is like we get bad programming for elite, but they're actually good for lower level, but it makes the competition that they're qualifying for bad because the workouts aren't matched up to their skill set. And vice versa. Like the open was, is almost too hard for most of the people to effectively compete 
to get to semifinals. And so we, we've had these ups and downs over the last year, and this question came up, and it is like down the middle, left and right. <laughs> well, yeah. Yes or no? It's pretty, it's, I think it's pretty close. It's, I think it's, it's, it's yeah. way closer than I thought it would be. Uh, way more and way more split than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I mean, but there are great points on both sides, which yeah. you said. I guess we need to do a show on this. <laughs> yeah, totally. It, I think it would be a great show. And I mean, and there's, you know, especially in, in our sphere, we have so many. I, I mean, high level coaches and programmers and analysts that would be able to really bring some interesting points to it. Mm -hmm. Think about think of all the people that that were that were around. You know the the oh, yeah. Taylor Selfs, the J.R. Howes, the Adrian Conways, the mm -hmm. you know the Brian Friends. I mean, all of the people, John Youngs, all of the people that play with you know uh, events and and workouts and with stimulus and, and skill sets too. Right, right. So I think I think it would be. It could be a really interesting discussion for sure. I do too. And so if you guys want to have that discussion before we have our discussion, go ahead and jump on our Instagram page, get with the programming, simple, straightforward, pop on there, give your feedback, give your opinion, uh, you know, be kind and <laughs> have as a- kind as you want to be or need to be. Come on now. Right? Like nobody has to be a dick about something. It's just, <laughs> it's just an opinion. But uh, today, I'm excited to backtrack and look at, if you guys haven't been aware, CrossIt.com, which we refer to as just .com, dot .com, and the programming as dot .com, which has been that since 2001, has been a, I would say, a Wizard of Oz-like man-behind-the-curtain programming for 20-plus years. Yeah. Right? We've, kind of, we've heard some whispers. Is it, is, was it Greg? Was it Jimmy? You know, was it, uh, you know, other people in the programming space, some level one red shirts over the years? Was it Dave? Like, who's doing this dot com? And it's always been the shadow game. And then a month ago, dot com or CrossFit announced that they're going to bring in, quote, I don't know. I don't want to use the C word. Guest. 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 That? Guest. Yeah. <laughs> Guest programmers every other two weeks for two weeks in a row. The first person off the table was, this is actually just a total coincidence I'm wearing, <laughs> shirt, was Dave Castro would be programming two weeks of .com. And then I'll go back to two weeks of whoever's behind the scenes again on staff there. And then the next two weeks were two weeks of Boz. And so what we're going to do today is we're not going to particularly analyze the programming, but we're going to talk about what was programmed, what their particular, I would say, goals were for their block of programming and really just turn over some stones naturally as the conversation unfolds. Do you feel like that's the, uh, I think that's, I think that's fair. I, I, I do think that we could dip into, you know, we talk about the why all mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that the dot com programming is something very specific to, to discuss about the pro the why, because it is okay. not yep. designed for anyone in particular. It's designed for everyone across the board. So now, uh, you know, once again, you have to kind of lean into the, the statements that Greg brought out at the very beginning. You know, the large loads, long distances quickly, the functionally, uh, constantly varied functional movements at high intensity. Yeah. Looking at all of those different things for a general physical preparedness or an increased level of fitness in, in our definition of fitness. And it's, I think it's really unique because most, most people that are programming, they're done in cycles. They're done for a particular goal. They're done for a particular event. And this mm -hmm. program is not. Yes. Which is very unique. And I think that, that that's something that people really have to understand. And again, like who, who do you think it would work best for now? as opposed to when it first came out. When it first came out, there were no competitions. No. So oh, that's a good point. You know, I mean, it's like it was not designed for any level of competition other than we mm. want you to be good at everything. And so that's, I think it's interesting. I think it's really interesting. And I love the fact that Dave, that Dave and Boz were both in because when you go back and look at some of the workouts that they programmed, it is very similar to very old time 
Mm -hmm. CrossFit, which is I can't wait to talk about. Get you out of the get you out of the gym. Do something that you wouldn't normally do. Try yeah. this thing. We'll put this weird thing and that weird thing together. Where nowadays people be like, what, "Why are you going to do that? It mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense." Yeah, but here it makes sense for the for the why, you know, which is overall worldwide general physical preparedness. Yeah, which is completely different. And you nailed it because dot com, as you just said, is the epitome of GPP. General physical preparedness. That is it. It follows the creed of everything you just laid out. Yeah. What I do like, and we'll touch on this, is that you said is like there's no cycles, there's no training programs, there's no, you know, dedicated focus on dot com. But what I did like to see is that Dave came out and said, these two weeks have a goal in mind. And Boz came out and said, these two weeks, there'll be more of an emphasis here in mind yeah. just for these two weeks. And what I really liked that what they both said, and it was very interesting, and we'll get to it when we get to either one of them, is that it is okay to program in cycles or focuses or as long as we always end up being balanced across the a, a, a timeline. And, and for CrossFit, it's just a... <laughs> Not to quote a Greg Lastman quote that got attributed to somebody else recently, but it was like, <laughs> <laughs> what is it, long distance horizon, like a never ending? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Greg Lastman. <laughs> Greg Lastman. Um, okay, so let's start with Dave. Okay, so Dave came on board, and his first workout he programmed was 10 rounds for time, 200 meter run and three ring muscle ups. But in his video, he said, I'm going to program this first and last in my two week cycle because I want to retest a, he called it a mini retest. Right. Which I thought was cool, which also came up a question is like, oh, what if they did it at the games? Like event one and the final event or so something like that, right? In a span of 14 to 15 days in this instance, that was his baseline purpose throughout his two weeks of programming. Um, when I looked at this one at first, I immediately was like, damn it. <laughs> I know your shoulder, huh? Right? I couldn't do it. Um, and then I thought, not a lot of people are going to respect this one for its simplicity and how dirty this can get if you have the, the, uh, the appropriate skill set. To maximize this. Oh yeah, Internet. yeah. I mean, it, it. This is what I. This is what I mean about how when these guys, when you have OGs in our space, and I don't mean they've been around for ten years. I'm talking like, like they've been around yeah. for time. Um, they remember some of the early day ones, and so they can bring up that feeling. And this had that feeling. You you don't see. It's not like on the out. You three ring muscle ups. Oh god. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, like right. Everyone, everyone would think that. Even someone that's not that great at ring muscle ups would be like, oh, I can do three. Mm -hmm. Cool. Not understanding that, like, if you're really doing this right, it is going to get really painful at minute six. <laughs> because if you're really doing it right. How fast you need to run yeah. the 200s. Right. Because one is not affecting the other. The ring muscle ups are not affecting your ability to run fast. However, your heart rate. Yep. And muscle fatigue and lactic acid buildup is yeah. going to build up and I would say either shake up or scare you out of the appropriate intensity that you should be tackling this. And I think that is going to be something we circle back to a lot over these next technically four weeks is intensity. Mm -hmm. I think we have lost all sense of the word. Yeah, they're I'm looking yeah. at all these online programs across the board and these affiliate programs, and it is an absolute sham. That's why do you think why do you think right Pukey now. disappeared? Pukey exactly. was around because of intensity, because you Pukey pushed that hard. I did a four hour marathon training <laughs> session. <laughs> Pukey because was you around can't do that when you when you empty minute. the tank. Yeah, I did a four minute intensity session with a rower and a barbell. Yeah. That's where Pukey came from. Um, I, uh, it may be a little off, but it'll kind of put us in the same kind of area. I saw something that Adrian uh, had, Adrian Conway had on his Instagram post, and he was talking about 
I have this level of fitness. I've been doing CrossFit all these years and I've been an athlete and I've been doing the dot com. And he's like, it really hurts. And I think we forgot how to hurt like that mm -hmm. because we try to game everything for efficiency. But, you know, I, I you, you obviously can see that when you're competing, you want it to be the best when you competing. But when you're training, you want the stimulus. And it's like I think so many people have no idea what it means to run the wheels off you know, and to right. really make it painful. So here are these very simple workouts that if you do them as they're intended, you should be done right. when you're done. And okay. So we, you know, we just wanted to set the scene as in theme really, as we move forward in this. So it's a, it's a couplet monostructural gymnastics, pulling and pressing with an emphasis on the pressing massive intensity. And I think one of the things here, too, is that not to spend 30 minutes on one workout or else this will be a six-hour podcast. Totally. Just kind of set, laying the foundation is that modifying and scaling to achieve the stimulus of the design of the workout is the number one most important thing coaches and owners and programmers need to be able to articulate to their members. Mm -hmm. Because someone can look at this and be like, oh, this is going to take me 20 minutes. I was like, yes, if this were a benchmark test and you're just trying to see where you're at, which technically this kind of is, okay, we get it. But this is a sub 10 minute workout. Straight up. Now, you may be able to achieve that. You may not be able to, but I think you should always be striving to achieve something like this. Yeah. And how you do that is like, okay, maybe three is too many. Maybe it's two. All right, maybe two is too many. Maybe it's one. Maybe it's three chest-to-bar pull-ups or regular pull-ups or some type of ring row or banded strict pull-up, not banded kip, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but something to get the same stimulus out of this as the mythical creature that is who this is programmed for, which is the perfect CrossFitter who's running, you know, 45 to 50 second 200s, which is, you know, that's a six minute to seven minute mile pace over the course of 10 rounds. So a 2K run, right, right? right? Six to seven minute mile pace with unbroken ring muscle ups. That's eight to 10 minutes. That's what we're looking at. So just wanted to set the scene there. Intensity can't always be programmed. It has to be done. Uh, day two, we have a couplet again. This is a 21.15.9 and a 9.75. Deadlifts at 225 and 155 and wall walks. So a little twist on Diane with wall walks. What do you think about this one? I do like this one. Well, for the general public, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> we, we, we touched on for general answer. GPP, yes, absolutely. General GPP, like you're going to get a great workout out of this. This is uh, fast. This is intense. The wall walks, got, I did this one, even with uh, the old wing, and I realized how hard, <laughs> how hard wall walks are and how much they tax my midline. Yeah, dude, yeah, so it much. Was great. It was great. It was great, and it was super intense. You know, what are you thinking? Like, it was around five to seven minutes for general purposes. Yeah. Right? But this could easily be looked at and be like, oh, um, it took me 15 minutes. I'm like, we did it wrong. We missed the boat. We missed the not, boat. E not even close. Right. Not even close. My Fran is 15 minutes. Like, you didn't do Fran. No, you didn't. Yeah. You, <laughs> thrust, you did presses and pull-ups. <laughs> uh, but another couplet. This time we have a weightlifting and gymnastic couplet. Day three, we have a heavy day. Hang, squat, snatch. So if you think about what we've done is that we ran, we did muscle-ups, or we did pulling gymnastics, and then we went a pressing inverted gymnastics and hinge from the floor. And now we're doing a hinge from the hang, but receiving in a squat at a 333-222-111 hang snatch format. I remember uh, when I used to go up to HQ when we were doing um, a lot of the broadcast stuff, you would see the board as they're building their their weeks out mm -hmm. 
and they would i mean it wasn't identical to what they would do like in the level one when they do the g the w the m and then the right, and 2g then like that it was, yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't as exact as that but you could see how that played into it a lot and so i like seeing what they're showing here and I, I, in fact on this one like the hang the hang squat i thought it was great because they forced the squat Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, hang, fine. You're not going to be pulling from the ground. You're still at a hinge position. Right. But we're still going to make you squat. So not only are you having the lifting, but again, if we're looking at general, at the general community out there, we're forcing that shoulder flexibility, mobility, and stability in that squat position. Because mm -hmm. it's not the hang part that's going to be really difficult. It's are you able to get underneath it deep enough to make that, to make that, uh, that snatch work. And you have a very dynamic, high-skilled barbell movement. Yeah. Which is, which is great. All right, now here's the next one. Rest day. Dave went on his video, if you guys haven't seen it, and said, we're so going to a... Is. I know, me too. Yeah. yeah. Only because it just fits my lifestyle. <laughs> what I've been doing for like the last 15 years. Right. Is traditionally, if people don't know, traditionally .com has been three on, one off forever. Mm -hmm. No time frame different than that. Not, I want to say forever, but for a... Majority of the times, and for a long time, it's been three on, one off. It's just the, the routine that they have. Dave came in, he's like, we're going to go three on, one off, followed by two on, one off. And for the OGs out there, he says, on the rest days, we're bringing back articles in the space, outside of the space, thought-provoking material to add to basically the dot com, which was very, very old school. And I know you were happy to see this back. Oh my gosh, dude, so much. I mean, one of the, you know, they, they talked CrossFitters. We not only were gritty doers, we were very gritty thinkers. So we were always kind of thinking on the fringe. And this was back when you could actually think on the fringe and you weren't like all of a sudden that threw tinfoil on the top of your head or anything like that. <laughs> but like, it was okay to question the stuff that was out there. So you would look at everything. You'd look at nutritional ideas. You'd look at, you know, uh, uh, governmental FDA type stuff. You'd look at yeah. cancer stuff. You'd look at things that, you know, would deal with you. But then also, you know, world political type I ideas and things that are happening out there. It's like just to know, know what's going on around you with, with, with some level of, I mean, not that you need to know everything, but it gives you a level of awareness. I mean, because it's funny, you, you listen right. like to Glassman talk on like Sevon's show, mm -hmm. the things that they get into and the amount of information that that guy pulls from, it's like, damn, dude, I thought you only had the nutrition thing down. <laughs> yeah. Like you pick a subject and that guy will go off on it. And this is, right. this is that idea. It's that book clubbish, you know, Ooh, I like that. The get your head out of the, you know, get your head out of the sand, you know, get your head out of the gym be physical don't be a dumb jock be physical but be intelligent and at least be able to analyze and 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 discuss and debate certain things you know on a on a on a level so i yeah i was stoked that these came out these and his books when he brought the books back out yeah the books too <clears throat> all right moving on to day four this was one of this was a deceiving very open-esque <laughs> workout AMRAP in 20 minutes, five push jerks on the left arm, push jerks, not push press. Yep. Five push jerks on the right arm with a 50 or 35 pound dumbbell, 10 push ups in a 15 cal row. And we went from 10, 12 minutes of mashed couplet intensity to five to seven minutes to a heavy day to a rest day to a 20 minute just churn Cindy-esque 5, 10, 15, right? Yeah, totally. Cindy-esque style. Very, very basic, very open-esque workout of just go and grind. No intensity. It got intense like the last, it's one of those where like the last six to eight minutes, you're like, please, God, <laughs> send a meteor. <laughs> <laughs> or one of those ones when after like the first five minutes, you're like, oh, no. Yeah, I oh, no. I'm going to get 672 <laughs> rounds of this. <laughs> and they start doing the math. Like, oh, God, that's so many push-ups. Right. <laughs> right. I say that, but I'm so bad at push-ups. That, that was the that was the <laughs> right here. And this is like, again, this is very Cindy-esque for me. Cindy being five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 air squats for 20 minutes. Push shirks, no problem. Switching arms was kind of nice because yeah. I got a little bit of a reprieve and I could breathe, but my legs never got a break because there's a dip, drive, and re-dip. 
which sucked because yep. then I had to stand up again. Is push press would have been much easier. That's why yep. it's not push press. But my push up stamina has never been good, and after shoulder surgery, it's back to the worse old days. <laughs> and so I like that halfway part. I was like, oh no, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. Yeah, Stefan, butterfly push. Right. <laughs> I know. But I thought this was a uh, a good addition to to what we were doing. Getting a little yeah, I thought I thought it was um, it was definitely diff- it was different. It was different just because of, like what you said the Cindy idea, but it was all push except for that one pull on the mm-hmm. on the row. Yeah, which doesn't really even matter because you feel right? right. You feel the legs there for your push for your push jerk. It was good. So it was good back man. and forth. Yeah. It was a really good, I could see this being an awesome open workout with the push-ups being like lateral burpees over the rower. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just keep it simple. Right. But it was good. It was, it was good. And after a while though, I was like the push jerks. I was like, ah, I'm not really enjoying these as much as I was (laughs) in the first 10 minutes. And then we come back to another heavy day, something we haven't done a lot of except for the last heavy day that we had. But we have a back squat five by five into a front squat five by three. And just getting it. below parallel with some weight. Yeah, I like this. You remember when they used to do uh they do back squat, they do a set of ten and then a set of like two. And then do a oh, set of eight and then yeah. a set of one. They're like this weird yeah. up and down kind of this one this kind of reminded me of that, made me think of that. It was good. Yeah. And I haven't I it was the first time I could really rack a bar both mm. back rack and front rack just because of, of my shoulder. So it's the first time I have back squatted or front squatted heavy for me relative. Yeah. 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 In almost a year. Wow. And I was so sore. <laughs> 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 I couldn't believe it. Cause usually from a, a heavy day like this, like you don't really get that sore because you're not really moving with that much intensity, but my legs have not gone under that much stress. Yeah. And drain. I mean, strength training is really muscle tearing and recovery. That's, that's what strengthening. I mean, dude, think about it though. Like in, in, when you do, for those that are out there, when you see like the five by five, five by five does not mean that three of those is warm ups. No. Five by five means those are the working sets. So you have however many warm ups that you have before that, before you get into that. So here we are. It's five sets of, I mean, it's 15 reps. If you, mm-hmm. if you just go down the line on that. So there's a lot of reps in here that are heavy based yeah. on whatever it is that you have, not even including your warm-up sets. Mm-hmm. So it's, that is, it ends up being a lot of work if you're doing it the right way. It, it was. It was good. And it was, uh, it was a nice reprieve coming off the high volume pushing and pulling from the day yeah. before. Yeah. Just right. getting under a barbell and taking your time and moving some heavy weight. Yeah. But you, again, you take this to a class setting and everyone's like, that's it? That's all we're doing? It's like, Yes. If you do the right five rep back squat, you should have to rest like three or four minutes just to recover for the next one and go up in weight. Yeah. But everyone wants to do like 1,000 reps. (laughs) They're like, okay, now where's the, uh, could we do a 20 minute AMRAP after this? Like, no. (laughs) Uh, Next day is a rest day. And don't let your eyes deceive you. There's a hiller. On I the was so excited when I saw that. I'm like, dang, dude, you made it. <laughs> you made it right there. You just been given the dominus omens right there. Although, I, you know, maybe that, that subtle line across the middle is just a little shot across the bow. I don't know. I don't know. But, nah. Uh, nah. <laughs> no. That was uh, good. All right. We come to week two. This is Monday. And you have the option. Run four miles for time. Or ruck three miles with a 30 or 45 pound pack. Much different stimuluses from each one. The running is where you really get that cardio respiratory, lung burning, leg burning, just suck fest for f- four miles. And the other is just a slow, steady attrition of backpack straps <laughs> and, <laughs> and leg fatigue and, and, and midline. But I, I like the option there. One, because as you said earlier, is like there isn't a, a fine definitive path for this. This is a, back to the get outside routes that we really had in the beginning. Yeah, and that was one of the things. I mean, in the old days, not everybody had all the equipment. So, I mean, I remember when, you know, not everybody had a rower back in the day. So it was like, okay, they had a whole index of 
here's a modification for this if you don't have this thing or don't have that thing. So if you don't have a ruck, okay, cool, go on the run. Mm -hmm. If you've been running or can't run for whatever reason or you know whatever whatever the situation is, here's an, another option that kind of puts you out in the ball in the same ballpark area. It's not going to be exact, obviously, but it, it gives you. I think what they're looking at here is kind of the time frame. You know, mm -hmm. giving you that time frame, uh, a similarity between the between whatever it is that they're going to give you, and then uh, send you outside somewhere. I liked it. I like coming off a high volume, low skill AMRAP into the heavy squat day, and then a rest day, and then a long monostructural endurance. And that goes. I mean, this kind of also goes right to our heavy back squat fast you know oh, fast yeah, mile yeah, kind of yeah. setup again you know kind of hark into that you, you hear those little echoes tuesday this was probably my favorite one he programmed <laughs> um not to do because i'm not there but because <laughs> oh my gosh i got buried but this it, it was great 50 ghd sit-ups it's a chipper 50 ghd sit-ups 40 alternating dumbbell snatches at 50 and 35 30 chest to bar pull ups, 20 handstand push ups. When it says that, it's anyway. And then 10 cleans at 185 and 125. It doesn't specify the basically the, the type of clean, which means you can do whatever you want. Right. I chose the option of squat clean because I felt like that was one of the missing pieces within this, this chipper, was a below parallel movement. So I opted for squat cleans and they absolutely crushed me. But this, this was awesome. It's really a lot faster than some people may think. This is, a, this is a quick one. It's like six to eight minutes? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you figure... Let's see, two, two... Two, two, two... I mean, if you give it two all the way down, you're looking at 10 minutes. Yeah, but I, and I think... The, what we're talking like the top, if you're again, top person, top six guys, eight minutes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without Just a doubt. Through it. Without and so a doubt. if you're doing like power cleans, but I, I like, I would have liked to enforce a squat clean there just for me. Yeah. Um, looking at it, either way, you're still doing a heavy pull from the floor. If you do a heavy pull from the floor, it kind of matches up with the dumbbell snatch a little bit. So I feel like we check that box with volume. And so getting below parallel with only 10 reps, I think yeah. it's the I, I hear you. It completes the chipper a bit more in my mind. I, I hear you on that. I think it, when I look at the, it the totality of the week, 100%, it slows it down. Yeah, it, it definitely does. I think that because we had the heavy back and front squats, mm -hmm. um, that we've already had some of the legs in there, I, I think it's just a the tempo. He, he was wanting to keep the tempo the same. So you're right. The, like a clean versus a squat clean, the tempo on those two would be totally different. Yeah. Uh, I like the clean. I mean, I, I like doing squat cleans. Yeah. I do like that. Um, I think just with the the speed at which everything else is going to be going, mm -hmm. that no, you're, you're right. that yeah. sits in there. I, yeah. But I get it. I get it. Uh, but yeah, for the yes, for the speed stimulus that all these provided, knocking out power cleans there would fit that framework. I agree. This this would be like if you if you. Uh, a quarterfinal event? Yes. Right? But make it squat cleans. Yeah, that's fine. For quarterfinals. Yeah, but yeah, th like th th this, you nailed it. This is a great quarterfinal event. Yeah. Everyone should be able to do this that make quarterfinals. It's a 185-pound clean and a 125-pound clean. Not everybody's going to be able to do it when you're taking 10%. Right. But... 90% should be able to complete this with some semblance of get after it. I mean, I would, I would even say like if, he, if you went toes to bar with the GHD, I mean, I would say you could almost put Ooh, it in an open harder. event. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it would be hard. It would be hard. But I'm just trying to think like, okay, like where, where would that fit? I mean, I, I like the GHC just equipment wise because you're not going to have as many people. I can see that being thrown in there. Plus, mm -hmm. I like the numbers for the quarterfinal. I like what this is an up. It's an up from what you would get in the open and mass the best being thrown out there. Will separate themselves because of the nature of the programming. Right. Not just because of the opportunity in the programming, I should yep, say. Yep, yep, not yep. because of the programming. 
not two I, I, I like five clean and jerks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like I thought this this was my favorite one, but I, I I'm a chipper fan, so yeah. this is just my bias. Uh, next one. Five rounds for time, 20 box jumps at 24 and 20. Not box jump overs, box jumps. And then 25 kettlebell swings. And I can see everyone just be like, basic, blah. And I'm like, yep. Go. This, to me, looked like a setup to train the intensity you'll need for, let's not forget, the micro repeat we have on hands. Yep. Which is unbroken box jumps, not necessarily rebounding. I didn't rebound. I don't do that anymore. But it was steady, I would say, nonstop box jumps and unbroken kettlebell swings. Yeah. With no rest in between. That was the goal. Yeah, without a doubt. And you should be able to. Like, that, that should be something that you're definitely shooting for. Um, because if you're not, like, this would be, this would be very easy to pace. Right. I'm going to break up the box jumps at 10. I'm going to break up the, you know, I'll, I'll do, I'll do one break on there so that I feel good on the last round. It's like, that's, you're missing the point of mm -hmm. this. The or object like, is what, how box can jumps, you like, sustain? Broken. What is your capacity level? Are you able to hold that intensity level for that? Mm -hmm. Sustain that, that level. Yep. And that's, yeah. And, and what it should be is there's really nothing in here that is going to break you down other than natural fatigue, which is not a reason not to go hard, right? or grip fatigue, which is just something you should train. And you can train it by really forcing yourself into grip failure is the only way you're going to be able to strengthen your grip. Yep. That's yep. it. Hold and if anybody it. started CrossFit days, and we all get there still, but I remember the days where I was like, it's gone. I don't know what else to do in the workout. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> And it was the growing pains. But this, to me, was a setup for feeling the intensity or getting used to the intensity you'll need to have a better second go at the first workout. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it, I mean, take all of the movements away. It's just the, the ability. Just hold on. Yeah. You cannot stop. Yeah. You have to hold on. I, I really liked it. And it's yeah. so basic. But it, it helps. I think it really helped people figure out what intensity was. Oh, uh, rest day book read the chrysanthemus mums. Chrysanthemum. Oh, I hate this word. I can never say it. You say it. Chrysanthemums. Chrysanthemums. Oh, I did it. Okay. Chrysanthemums. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Book. Add that to the uh, book club. Yeah. All right. Next. Five rounds for time. This is Friday. Five rounds for time, 50-foot overhead walking lunge with an empty barbell, followed by 21 burpees. Again, we have another couplet. It's a gymnastic and weightlifting, so it's back-to-back, -back, and we've had three of these so far. And this is, I would say, a nod to a very old-school, do you remember this workout, the death march? Oh, dang, yeah. 400 wow. meter overhead walking lunge with an empty barbell. Yeah. You basically go to a track with an empty barbell and you overhead lunge 400 meters. And it was an empty barbell. People wanted to spice it up by adding weight, but you really didn't need to. It's kind of one of those things like, oh, I had a weight for a, oh, I had a weight vest for Cindy because I'm hardcore. I'm like, no, you're just a pussy. You just slowed down. <laughs> you're just a coward. <laughs> <clears throat> so you had this, but you had the interference with the midline and the overhead stability. And then the yeah, burpees right. helped neither one of those. Right. And none of this was too hard to do. None of this was that, none of this was difficult. It was all, how hard are you willing to push? You won't fail. You'll yeah. just you don't fail on a burpee. Nope. Just fall Worst down, burpee. get back up again. <laughs> I'm going to pass out. There's half your burpee done. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, again, the, uh, the last time frame, what do you say? Eight to 10 minutes. This one's similar. Um, 50 foot. I mean, down and back 25, 25. Yeah, that, that's, that's not going to take very much. That's like a, yeah. Not and at pushing all. the burpees. I mean, pushing the burpees for 21 reps each time is pushing a minute to a minute and change, but you're getting that change back on the lunge. So those that are flying and trying eight to 10 minutes, I think for the last two that we had. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, Stefan, don't you dare. 
cheap empty barbell because you'll want to throw it on the ground. <laughs> Don't, Don't ever do that. Care. You'll never <laughs> be at my gym again. <laughs> <laughs> ever. And then we have, this is actually one of another great one. Five rounds of Cindy for time. Then once you are done, you have five minutes to establish a heavy deadlift. And then once that five minute window is up, you go back to five rounds of Cindy for time. So five rounds of Cindy, however long it takes you. If you're done in three minutes, your clock starts. You have until the eight minute mark to hit a heavy one rep deadlift. And then at the eight minute mark, you go back to your five rounds of Cindy. This was super fun. How many, uh, how many deadlifts did you get? Uh, I got... Four, five, four? About five. Okay. Because I had weight on the bar waiting for me. Yeah. I think I had like 225 on the bar. So I could just come off because I didn't fully send the first round of Cindy. Right? I didn't go slow, but I wasn't like racing my air right. squats. Pull right. up, and I had to do these strict. So that took away from my time. But like it was come off the pull-up bar, ride into my push-ups, do those as fast as I can unbroken as well as I could, hop up, and then just do 15 squats without slowing down, yeah, but right. not necessarily going terribly fast, focusing on depth and extension at the top. Because, I mean, like, what am I training for right now? Good quality movement and getting back in shape. On the second half, that's when I started to try to push the only place where I really could, and that was the back squats, but my push-up started to, to fail. Oh, really? <laughs> so I really had to start pushing the air squats, which I didn't want to have to do. You can't really <laughs> make up too much time in, in 15 air squats without doing bad range of motion. But uh, yeah, it was good, man. I mean, I don't like, I'm not, not that I don't like, I don't like it because I'm deadlifts end up, I have back problems. <laughs> so then deadlifts are, are rough for my body in general. I'm also yeah. not great at them, but it was fun to pull some weight off the floor in that format. Um, th this is very old school. I mean, never back in the day would you see any sort of percentages or anything like that. It was just grab something heavy. So this to me is a very old school uh, version of something that would be on .com, something like this. And, they, and it seems almost like when I look at this now, I, I would – my probably automatic would be not to do a establish a one rep max in the middle. It would be, okay, now you have to hit mm -hmm. so 50 reps at whatever, you know, something, whatever it would be. It would be another element. It would not the Cindy element, but it would be something else rather than here's five minutes where you get to slow everything down and you get to do whatever. But I, but back then they didn't think that way. You know, we're always yeah. thinking, how we, you know, what's the stimulus that we're trying to get? Where are we going here? Where are we going there? And like on this particular one, you have, for the most part, you have speed in the beginning. Everyone can do the five rounds of Cindy and you, you'll get out there. Now your heart rate's up. Now you got to pull something heavy. And if you're pulling truly heavy, okay, that's going to blow out your midline. Now it's like, now you have fatigue, a little bit of reprieve with the cardio rest, but now you've, you know, zapped your, your, uh, central nervous system a touch yes <laughs> now can you go all out because now it's light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. now you're not waiting for anything at the end so right. now it's like all right now get after it and see what you can do so yeah. i think that that last you know the, the all of the other stuff goes right to that last round all right let's see what you can do the five rounds now yeah so i and, like that and it's very old school and this is an interval style yeah. workout with heavy day yeah which is a cool combo yeah and the, and the trap here is everyone focusing too much on the deadlift. Yep. So they yep, yep. sandbag the first five rounds because they actually want to go hard on the last five rounds. And that's not how you get better. Yeah. And, and, and something that I wanted to also throw as we were looking at these and when I was going back and looking at Boz's too is these go back to very black box ish, black box -ish types of programs. It's like, let's see what this does. Let's see what you can do when you throw this into the mix. Mm -hmm. Let's see how your body, you know, responds to this. Right. Rather than like, let me see how strategic I can be as I'm setting the whole thing out. I, yeah. I, I dig that. I love that. I love that. Or, or let me, so old school. Let me out program you so it's hard and you don't have to think about actually trying. 
Right. Or well, the difference between hard and intense. Right. Oh, that was so intense. Like, no, it was too, no. too hard for you. Right. I had to break up all my pull-ups. I'm like, what? No, that's not the point. Right. It was hard. <laughs> it wasn't intense. Yeah. It was just heavy. It and wasn't intense. Everybody wants too hard or too much. Jeez. Uh, okay, interval heavy, rest day. Edgar Allan Poe. Awesome. The tail, tail, heart. And then we come to Monday. And so we had, leading up to this, we had a six to eight minute, a eight to 10 minute couplet, eight to 10 minute couplet, interval heavy day. And Monday, we went something that's very Jerry-esque, if anybody remembers that hero workout. But Jerry is run a mile, 2K row, run a mile. And it looks like Dave split it up to run a mile, 2,000 meter echo bike, 1,000 meter row, run a mile. Yeah. All monostructural, all long, basically the exact opposite of what we just did. And tailoring into what's to come after this. And you're never going to, the other part I love about this is very old school again is you'll never see this in a regular gym workout. You, I, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you right now, I won't program this at my gym. I, 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 I would have a very, me, it would be very hard for Bill Grundler to type in, run one mile, <laughs> row this far, get on the echo bike, run Pass. another mile. I just, I don't think, I think I would be here by myself coaching me because no one else would show up that day yeah which, i mean which and i mean you know obviously there's business side aspects of of what we're doing in the affiliate but at the same time it's a matter of the coach explain why is this important right it is important to do stuff like this it is yeah. important to go all monostructural and hit i mean I, I like the fact that it's not just it's not running repeats necessarily so you get to have a little bit of variety in there and yes. it is this is a good sunday one get outside oh yeah that's you a, know it's a good one so and you, you nailed on something right there, too, is that the fear that affiliate owners or programmers have to program necessary workouts that people won't necessarily show up for, yeah. I think always falls on the shoulder of the coach, owner, and programmer to basically articulate why this is important to convince people to do so, which it's is very hard to do. Education is huge. huge. That's our job. That is our job to educate. Like if you program a five-minute workout for the day and you know this is everything everyone needs to experience. And people are like, what? Well, it's only five minutes. Like there's so much we can do in this hour that is going to not only we can say it's like Elizabeth squat cleans and ring dips. It's like, there's so many scales and modifications and way to do this. There's so much teaching involved with the clean and the process and like all of these things, people will be moving and training and progressing on leading up to one of the nastiest girl workouts ever created. For me, I hate it. Squat cleans, everyone. Squat cleans. And it still takes five to seven minutes. Yeah. But it is, when, it, when it's done correctly and it's over, there's not a soul that will say they didn't get something out of it. I don't think I've ever had a problem with, with, with any of the uh, under 10-minute workouts. It's always these ones. Really? <laughs> if I was to have the super long run, the super, I don't yeah. know, maybe, maybe it's my culture that I've I just. Honestly, think it's different uh, gym to gym. I, I agree with that. State. I agree with that. One of, one, uh, one benchmark I would program at least once or every two years is Jerry. Ah, okay. And we would have a good turnout, but like the way I structured the week and talked to people, nobody wanted to show up for that. <laughs> I get it, right? It's sometimes, <laughs> and it's, or sometimes it's actually easier to sell the one rep max day. Uh, but let's say the five by five back squat day, right? Like the, it just took some convincing and uh, I leaned into it the best I could to get the most out of it, right? Yeah. Did everybody show up? No. Did it scare me away from programming what I knew would be a good fit for what we were trying to do? No, right? But you're right. Communication Education, education, yeah, and the and the, the self confidence to do something like that, I think, is missing more often than not because of these other affiliate programs out there right now. Of it's just like more is more, more is better, and we know that it's not the case, and that it drives that fear. Yeah, I really of a we're, we're not a. 
we're I mean, we're the expert. And I, 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 I that's where I personally have a really I have a difficult time with. Uh, I have a hard time understanding why a gym that opened up to help people because you're a coach. That's where you stemmed from. And you want to be able to get yourself out there to make people better. Um, and then you have someone else give all of your prescription mm -hmm. to you. Like you're not even have that. And it's really hard to educate people when it's not your prescription. When I'm yeah. doling out my medicine to my members. Yeah. I know exactly why I know exactly how, because I'm the, I'm the, I'm the old school doc that's given it to them. Right. It's not, you know, and, and you know, this is no, no shot on any other programs out there or even the cap program with, with, you know, the, the CrossFit has or anything. But I think that it's really hard to sell what is not yours. I'm not a used car salesman. Oh, I, I, I don't do that at all. Like I know exactly yeah. what I'm giving you because I made it right. You know, and, and my, my coaches and my culture, you, need, you mean like doing other people's. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you're talking about education. It's really hard yeah, to yeah. educate why it's so important when you don't fully believe it. Like I, it. I'm not a salesman, dude. I am not a salesman, Got but it. if someone comes in here and wants to talk about why they should be doing CrossFit here in Inferno, I'm not selling you. I'm telling you. Yeah. Cause you're I believe it. It's different. Yeah. You're a teacher. You know? You're an educator. Yeah. You're a coach. I'm a coach. You're a coach. Uh, 30 plus, no, no, not 30 plus, sorry. Uh, 20 plus was always the goal for this one. Actually, sub 20 for Jerry was always the goal. Uh, yeah. Which was, I missed by six seconds, I think, one time. Ew. I know, I was upset with myself, but I didn't really, I don't think I had six seconds in that last mile. <laughs> and this is where I get, I get angry at myself. I was like, but I, did I have two seconds in the first mile in the middle 2K in the last mile. I'm like, yes, yep, I did. Yep. I'm like, damn it. Yep. You idiot. <laughs> uh, and then we hit our repeat. So this was actually day 16 of Dave's. Um, but we hit the repeat there for day one. Right? 10 rounds for time, 200 meter run, three ring muscle ups. What you should have learned, what we've done over the course of this time is we said this is a... At its fastest, an eight to 10 minute workout, right? For the yeah, yeah. fabled CrossFit athlete. After that, we did a five to seven minute burner. We've done three heavy days in that time frame. We've done one mixed with an interval. We've done three workouts that are 20 minutes or more. We've done four workouts that are eight to 10 minutes burner in that time frame. Channeling intensity, working on endurance, and strength, and that hopefully in two weeks you have built, not necessarily you've gotten fitter, but you have experienced enough different things that you can use to get better at that repeat test in two weeks. Yeah, it's a, it's a level of comfort with the uncomfortable at that point. Because the first time when you first felt it, you're like, oh, okay. But now that you've hit a couple of those workouts through uh, the last two weeks... You're sitting in there, and you, you know exactly what it's supposed to feel like. So you're like, okay, I, I know that I'll be okay when this is hurting. I know I can keep on going. I know I can keep this, ten, this intensity up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I totally got lost in the first mile. I was running at a different affiliate. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. There you go. Like a mile and a half on the first one. It's like, shit. I was like, an 11-minute mile? Gosh, I am so slow. Then you, um, you, okay, you had so, your six seconds. <laughs> yeah, so that, was, uh, so that was two weeks of Dave. Um, biggest takeaway from those two weeks that you think is a great educational tool for new athletes to CrossFit or coaches or experienced coaches? Uh, my, my biggest takeaway from that is understanding what makes CrossFit work the way that it does. We take a lot of different movements. We take the best of the best. We put it all together for a high level of intensity. That's the main thing. And understanding the, the, the difference between, and we, you know, we've said it already a handful of times on the show, the difference between intensity and something that's hard, intensity and something that's heavy. Just because it's hard, just because it's heavy, just because like, I'm, I just can't pick that weight up anymore. Okay, well, that means intensity is now coming down. 
right. because you're not moving. Work isn't getting done. So um, understanding those things, I think, is really important. And uh, not being afraid to mix some things up that don't seem like they should necessarily come together very well. Yeah. Not being afraid of putting things together. Black box. We, we lived by that. It was the lab. The gym was the lab. Mm -hmm. And I, I like that they were, uh, you know, even in two weeks, you saw that. And I think that the deadlift one to me. Yeah, was that, that one experiment. Like, I'm like, ooh, yeah. New programming channel unlocked. Yeah, totally. It's like there's that. That's the black box. That's the let's see what this does. Yeah. Let me see what happens here. And you start playing. It's, the lab. Kind of it's awesome. It's, it's a great. laboratory. And, the, you know, the harp on intensity, again, why is that important? Because. It is the most important thing that you can do to get what you want. You want That's to burn more stimulus. fat, you have to do intense workouts. You want to build more muscle mass, you must be intense in your strength training. You want to get better work capacity, you must be intense when you do your 8 to 10 minute workouts. You want it, anything you want, physically, outside the box in your life, whatever it is, intensity is the only thing that is going to get you there in the manner and the appropriate way that you want. That's it. That is, that's it. That is the bread and butter of CrossFit. Intensity. Yeah. Not too hard. Not too much. The stimulus of which it's supposed to be must be maxed out to its maximum capacity. That type of intensity. Yeah. That's that power output. I mean, that was, you know, goes back to all the, I mean, Greg loved that stuff. The scientific formulas. Power. It's how much work can you get done in the shortest amount of time. Uh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's switch over to Boz. Boz's first day was, uh, was it Labor Day? I think it was Labor, no, it was uh, September 11th, sorry. Oh, September yeah, yeah, 11th, yeah. he said, pick a hero workout of your choice. Um, That's fair. Fair, right? Pick a hero workout of your choice. On September 11th, yes. Got it. The, I would say is if you're doing that in following.com is like try to pick something that won't bury you for the rest of the day. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, day two, we have a heavy day. Overhead squat, three by five. Front squat, three by three. Back squat, one by one. A good little mixed bag here. Yeah. I, I Again, I think it's great that... Uh... This is it. I, I personally, I felt that they, both him and Dave, felt it's almost like they responded to just a little bit of pressure about like, look, I can't just do five by five and that's it. Yeah, that's right. almost yeah. what I felt like. I'm not, I'm not going to say that, but that's almost. I'm like, uh huh. You had to fill in there just a little bit more. I get it. But like with the overhead squat, front squat, back squat, those are all great warm ups as you're increasing the weight, getting up to the, the heavy back. So they all are, you're working heavy, yes, but at the same time, you're warming up the weight to the next movement too. So I right. think that's good. I like yeah, it. Yeah, and I liked it. He's like, okay, my five rep overhead squat, when I go to front squat, I could probably match that Yeah. for my first one. And so you kind of like tear step up to the next one. And, yeah. and I liked hitting all three, um, a good little... Mixed match there for a heavy day. Coming off a high volume day. Now we come to Wednesday. This is the one <laughs> nobody will show up for that right. everyone should show up for. Oh, it's I so can't, ugly. Right? So ugly. It, it was, dude, this was awful. Your, your, your story that you put up, <laughs> I, I watched it like three times and I was laughing so hard. Uh, there's half of the, half of the, the video was you going, <sighs> 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 It's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> this was awful and you could make this worthless it is so easy to make this worthless and i think these are the hardest workouts to coach yeah over all of them people can figure out how to go heavy because they just put up too much weight on the bar that's easy to figure out and it's not scary and it doesn't hurt like oh, oh can't do it <laughs> yep this is awful. It's like a thousand meter, seven hundred fifty. But why? Where's my real? Where's my workout? I'm like God. If we could just, if you could help me explain this workout, <laughs> is this is the perfect dose of intensity? It's, this was awful. It, it's it really. Awful. How many times have you seen an athlete, dude, that has all of the uh, 
all of the skills, all of the ability, but doesn't have the heart. Yeah. Like it's like you look at him, you're like, if I had, if I only had 80% of what you physically have, yeah, and you put my heart on it, I would <laughs> rule the world. Rule the world. And that's and that's this, that's this right here. You're right. It, it's either gonna be the the worst, best workout for someone, or yeah. it's literally almost a waste of time. Yeah. You could also screw it up two ways. One, not trying hard enough. And then it's just a waste of your time. Two, going too hard in the first thousand, and then you can't effectively do the rest of the workouts. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, when, so I mean, this it actually takes someone with some experience because you have to understand where your pacing levels are going to be. Yeah, and you got to know where you're going to be, and that's, that's tough. What we say pacing is like managing fatigue, and it's like getting so close to the edge of the cliff, right? That tunnel. Red line closing, but you can expand it back for the next one. And then you yep. close it. It's not pace the thousand. I'll go a little faster on the 750, a little faster in the five, and I'll, I'll send it on the 250. That's not it. That's not it. Uh, Bill, unique situation. Are you ready for this? Sure. I have to go get my son because we just got a <laughs> call. <laughs> oh, that's why you said you got me. I'm like, hey, I got a coach in the noon class. Yo, yeah, dude, I got you. Yeah, I mean because I got to cut mean, it short. <laughs> I have to hey live live show, folks. But uh, I just got a call on the bat phone that my son is uh, not, feeling, not feeling well at school, so I'm gonna have to go pick him up. Uh, so I guess that means we just need to start over and just do a boz.com review. Yeah, that's fine. We, we, we just that. got there. We yeah, just we got there. All right. Uh, for those of you guys watching at home, thanks for rolling with us for at least the two solid weeks of Dave.com. I think the stones we unturned were, and we'll touch on this when we go to Boz.com because I think Boz really allowed people to figure this out on their own. Oh, yeah. Is intensity. Yeah. And we'll go why that's important, the definition that CrossFit uses, how that can fast track all of your fitness goals across a yeah, wide see. spectrum. I seriously brought the right shirt for all of the stuff that we're talking about. This OG, is the pukey. I got it all going on right now. Yeah. So uh, sorry we got to cut the show short, but I'm glad we got through the Dave.com. We'll turn around and do the Boz.com next week. Other than that, Bill. Bye, guys. Enjoy coaching your classes. You guys have a great weekend. We'll see you guys next time.